All right. Uh, Sean, I believe you're muted, unless you're talking. Nope, I got it. Oh, I, got an, I got an inline mute, mute with my work from home fun bucks, uh, and I'm still getting used to it. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh. Uh, so, uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> First, let me, let me start. Forgive me a little preamble. Um, there's the mouse. All right. So uh, I, this is an excerpt from an email I sent to my team a while ago. I, I'm not going to read it to you, but I want that in the background as I talk. Um, a couple weeks ago, psychological safety and inclusion were especially hot topics uh, among engineering leadership. I mean, we, we always talk about it. It comes up often, but it was it had just come up in, in many cases. And then at the same time, uh, Reem mentioned that this event would be coming up and she invited the directors to share because um, as, as some sort of leader, uh, I want to model the behavior I want at Active Campaign. So I don't, <laughs> if it sounds like I'm struggling, it's because uh, I love being the center of attention, but I don't like talking about myself. So um, uh, anyway, without further ado, I don't want to bury the lead. Uh, so I'm an alcoholic. Um, <laughs> the other stories were so much more uh, sort of uh, dramatic. Uh, mine, uh, honestly, like uh, I'm presenting it to one, model that behavior, and two, to, to sort of share my, like I said, mundane story, um, because maybe somebody out there is also um, going through this in a, uh, a similar way. So growing up, uh, my parents drank, I drank. Uh, but I didn't really have a model outside of popular culture for alcoholics. Um, you know, I, I remember reading uh, uh, Stephen King's memoir, and he talks about, like, how much would you like to drink? All of it. And I was like, that's, that's not how much I want to drink. I want to drink a lot, but, like, not all of it. I'm fun. You know, it's, it's me, Sean. I don't, uh, I don't uh, I'm not mean to people. I have a job. I'm relatively healthy. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, look at me. It's cool, Sean. Come on. Uh, I still like this picture because I'm holding two types of champagne. So, um, in our own Slack in 2018, um, Colleen shared a link to this book, and um, I, I must have been curious or or something like because I I downloaded it from Audible, but it sat there for for a while. Um, so let me, let me go back a little bit and start at the beginning. So this is a graph of my alcohol usage over the years. Uh, in high school, I got turbo drunk a couple times. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Uh, in college, uh, I looked forward to drinking. Um, <laughs> given, given space, uh, I talked to other people about their college experience and they liked drinking, but they didn't really like look forward to it like I did. I, it was like an event. I was very excited. Uh, to get some beers. Um, so I turned 21, I start working full time. And um, I, uh, I, I would get a drink here and there, but it, it uh, was by no means like the backdrop of my life uh, until I moved to Chicago, which has a powerful drinking culture. Uh, and I found myself going out to, to drinks after work uh, pretty much every single day uh, with my new work buddies. And so slowly but surely, uh, you know, drinks after work became drinks in the house. Fast forward 2017, 2018, uh, I realized that like, uh, I'm effectively buying a six pack a day, uh, getting a couple bottles of wine to go into the weekend, like, uh, and all this time I had no sense of like, you know, what, if that was normal, if that was good, if that was bad. As I started with, I felt fine. Uh, I don't think I was messing anything up. Um, things were going pretty well. Uh, but then in the spring of 2019, I remember I had my annual physical in the winter and I talked to my doctor and I was like, how much drinking is enough or like is, is normal? And he was like, ah, you know, it depends. And <laughs> I still give my, my doctor a hard time because he refused to give me any sort of like uh, limits. He was just like, ah, you know, you're doing fine. God, everybody could cut back. Um, and I, I still to this day don't remember what it was, but I... Um, started listening to the audiobook, This Naked Mind, and I, I wept on the way to the office because I realized, like, ah, oh, shit, this is me. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so like I recognize the patterns of addiction and because I'm a brilliant person, I could recognize and control addiction. So I stopped drinking for a little bit. Then I had one beer every so often, you know where this is going. Then I had six beers in my friend's backyard. Then I had a million beers. Then it was back where I started. And again, it was okay until um, I hurt myself running, like not a major thing, but I had this shin splint thing and this weird, and it moved to my, my calf and it was weird and I couldn't run. So I was gaining weight. Um, and I, I go to my doctor again in the winter of 2020 and uh, my, all the indicators are bad. So there's, there's no like dramatic finish. There's no exciting like uh, finale to all this. Uh, it's just, I, I put it in my calendar on the 17th of February. I was like, well, I guess I don't drink anymore. Like, a, like an allergy or a trick knee or I don't know, anything that we, we deal with. Uh, I just decided that I'm not going to do it. And I stopped and I haven't done it anymore. Um, so I, I don't have any best practices. I don't have any brilliant ideas. Um, I just know that uh, if you do something a lot, maybe... <laughs> You should consider um, looking into addictive habits. Um, maybe, uh, <laughs> um, maybe, maybe you might be struggling with something. Um, I don't know. Check it out. This Naked Mind is a, a pretty good audio book. Thanks for listening, everybody. That was absolutely amazing, Sean. Thank you so much. Like it's really, <clears throat> it's really, you almost made me cry. 